Mike here, Sharp Pointy Things. Today we're going to look at one of people's favorite weapons, <coughs> the Shuriken. Throwing star, ninja star, kung fu star, Japanese star, all kinds of names. <coughs> uh, there's two predominant types. There is the bow shuriken, because anything that you can throw could be a shuriken, and shaken, but it's like the difference between handgun and revolver. Calling them shuriken is fine. Uh, shuriken is a Japanese word that means hand-hidden blade. So bring the camera in and let's look at what we've got. <clears throat> Alright, so as I said, there's the bow shuriken. These were basically forged out of a piece of metal with a point. Some had tassels, <clears throat> some didn't. <clears throat> and then various styles <clears throat> of shaken, shuriken with different points. Uh, these date predominantly from the 1700s and later. <clears throat> they were used as adjunct weapons by the samurai. The few actual ninjas did use them. They were a distraction weapon, a supplemental weapon. Few of them survived because they're expendable, and they were mostly made of cheap materials. The, this one I hammered out last night. It took about five minutes to forge the point, file it, and then I stuck it in the oven to to blacken it, because it wasn't done with a forge. Now, no one in the West really knew about these until a bunch of bad martial arts movies in the 1970s. Or is bad martial arts movie redundant? <clears throat> but there were all kinds of commentary on the movies of, uh, the angle of the blade is precise to allow it to enter the eye socket and pierce the brain. <clears throat> That's not going to pierce the brain. That's how much is going to go in at best. No matter how hard you throw it, no matter where you hit. Now you have to consider, <clears throat> these were used as a distraction weapon frequently when uh, evading, evacuating an area. Someone's chasing you, you whip one of these at them, they're going to flinch. <clears throat> if they get hit, it's going to hurt, possibly cause a small injury. It slows them down while you run. Um, you're moving, they're moving, you're throwing, it's spinning. The odds of actually hitting someone directly with a point are slim. <clears throat> the three-pointed one obviously can go fairly deep and theoretically can be used as a knuckle knife, although if you're not wearing gloves I wouldn't attempt it. <clears throat> the four-pointed ones were very common because they're easy to make. It's easy to do four symmetrical points. <clears throat> Doing more than that gets a little complicated. Um, these could be, some of them were hammered out of coins, <clears throat> out of garden tools, nails, <clears throat> Uh, a lot of them have a hole where they were either tied to something or looped on something. Uh, those were a very common style. <clears throat> now on this one, that might actually penetrate far enough to do some injury. Um, it's unlikely to be lethal. You know, this was, you see people with them stuck in their skulls in martial arts movies and they're dead. <clears throat> and even if you've got that into someone's skull, good luck. Throwing a lightweight, this, this is a, an ounce. <clears throat> at someone's skull, you might cause a flesh wound that will bleed a lot, but the odds of it actually penetrating the skull are very unlikely. <clears throat> and even then, it's not going to go very far in. Now, when you get to five or six point, <clears throat> this gives you a kind of a sweet spot between depth of penetration and likelihood of hitting, because the fewer points you have, the less likely it is to actually hit. If it hits like this, it doesn't do much. And of course, all these are modern interpretations of historical weapons. Um, I've got a seven point, actually yes, that's a seven point for some weird reason, I think just for collectors. <clears throat> when you get to eight point, you know, again, you've got very minimal penetration. And these are big <coughs> shuriken. Now, if you go with the kung fu style one, this is made to be a pendant. If you want to hang something sharp and pointy around your neck where it's going to bang against your chest. Um, if that's your thing, go for it. I'm not going to do it. <coughs> the most that can penetrate is about that far, and this isn't even sharpened. And a lot of them really weren't. Again, you want to whip it at somebody, they duck, they flinch, they get hit, it hurts, they yell ow, <coughs> they give you a few seconds to get away. <coughs> And when you get to smaller ones, they they're, have almost no weight. They're going to, and again, made to be a pendant. <clears throat> I think originally that was so you could tie it to a pouch. 
but recently they were marketing these as being with a chain to be worn as a pendant for some odd reason. Uh, they come in various other shapes. <coughs> And they're fun to throw. Uh, they become legal again in a lot of uh, jurisdictions because once axe throwing became a sport, shuriken throwing became a sport. <coughs> and uh, they started uh, getting legislation to make them legal for sporting purposes in bars because you know, what every drunk needs is a sharp weapon to throw. Uh, darts, axes, shuriken, you know, what could possibly go wrong? So different uh, laws with different applications. Uh, there's one law that was blades at, at set at different angles. So if it's only one blade, sharpen all the way around, or, you know, way the edge, then that passed muster. And then there's things that are not shuriken, that are not addressed by these laws. That's legally not a shuriken. I guarantee if you throw it at someone, it's uh, going to cause some injury and make a mess. It's also rusty, which means they're likely to get some kind of infection. In the movies, there is frequently an instant acting poison on the shuriken, which doesn't really exist and would be very dangerous if you managed to nick yourself. <clears throat> and the whole thing, like, like a lot of weapon laws, they, they make no sense whatsoever. You can't carry a sharpened piece of metal to throw at someone because you might injure them. Okay, but I can carry a piece of brick, right? They're a fun toy. They're, they're a neat sport. I like throwing some of them. It's not something I would consider using as a weapon. Um, and again, they were a distraction device, a supplemental weapon. You're in a sword fight with someone, you whip this at their face, and all of a sudden they're doing this while you slash at them. Uh, so th they had a use, but th they were not some magical device by which you could render hundreds of people dead. Uh, I would rather you didn't throw one at me, but if you do, I'm going to throw something back, and it's not going to be a pointed star. So on the uh, occasions when I threw these, and for some reason, that was when I was younger. It was, it was a thing I did when I was young and not so much anymore. <clears throat> these were the ones I preferred to throw. And this one, way back, these were actually made in Japan. Um, they're precision machines, decent quality, which of course doesn't describe the historical ones. Uh, and these are Taiwanese copies, which are still reasonably decent. Uh, this style is easy to throw without hurting yourself. There's, there's several grips you can use. Uh, the four point theoretical textbook ninja star is again you've got a place to put your hand or you can hold it by the point but it's much easier than some of the more complicated ones and six pointed say is that sweet spot where you've got plenty of point for impact so that it doesn't bounce off <clears throat> and you still get enough penetration for it to stick once you get above that back to these eight points you're really, you know, unless you have a really soft target, they don't stick very well. But the purpose of them was to whip it at somebody's face, cause them to flinch, and maybe put an owl on them. And they were you know, a distracting device, a painful device, but with no reasonable expectation of lethality. Now I'm going to put a still picture up here. So this is basically a folding knife with three different blades that you can pivot open. And when uh, a study in Germany used these, they were able to get, with a professional thrower, up to one inch of penetration into gelatin, which theoretically would indicate being able to cause a lethal, slowly lethal wound to the human anatomy. You could pierce the belly and cut some intestine. This is not a historical shuriken. It's it's a not even really a shuriken. I, I guess you can throw it. It's sort of a throwing knife, <clears throat> but yeah, it's a modern gimmick. And as soon as you throw that, it hitting anything hard, it's going to break. Uh, this is a collectible piece, as a lot of these things are. It's not something you would actually try to use in a fight. And if you did, there's much more effective weapons, and there's much cheaper and easier to get throwing weapons that will cause more damage. Now, there was an entire school of shuriken jitsu, uh, the, and, uh, the art of throwing these things. There were also other throwing weapons, uh, stones, thorns, knives. Uh, one uh, school used little animals like mice and frogs as a distraction. You pull a frog out of your pouch, 
whip it at somebody's face, and it comes flying towards them with his arms flailing, and uh, they're going to freak out. Um, eggs were blown out and then emptied with, or filled with either flour, uh, or worse, quicklime, which could actually damage your eyes. And they, you, when you know, ninjas disappeared in a flash of smoke, well, they had a usually an egg full of powder, crush, throw. It makes a cloud, and it might be a toxic cloud. But you know, there's entire disciplines to throwing these things for distance and accuracy. Most people are pretty good with a rock. Um, you don't need years of training to throw a rock. And if you've got more than one rock, once you start throwing, you have their attention, and they're very desperate not to get hit by a flying rock. Um, two things you can do. One of the common ones is you loft one, and they're watching that, and then you whip the second one straight at them. So, it comes down to being a throwing weapon. We've been throwing weapons for millions of years, and these are fun, but they're not something that needs to have a mystique and fear about them. So you know the drill below, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, so we can do more of these videos. Uh, the website is Sharp Pointy Things. It's largely custom stuff and vintage stuff. It varies from time to time. Uh, these videos are meant to be informative. Thank you very much.